Hello, it's been quite a while since I did either a coping with Corona or a Journeys with Jane video, so I'll do something, because I always think it's quite nice to give to the world in one way, shape or form. And uh, today's one is because I'm finding it really difficult to get into work rhythm. Um, hopefully more of you are in more of a normal rhythm, but especially for the self-employed whose industries are disrupted in some kind of way, I can really relate. And it brought to mind something which Jane once said. Now, Jane was an artist, okay, and let me just show you some of her work. Here, for instance, is one of her pieces, which I really, really love. Now, funnily enough, another artist friend of mine says that he doesn't like it, and I'll tell you why. It's because the shading over here is very faint, whereas it should be richer, the color should be richer, and going to fainter over there so it should kind of go from the richest of colors to kind of medium and then to faint so he said well she's got it wrong because you have faint and the rich is in the middle and then it's faint again at the back but the very person who taught me about that fact of shading in art or color richness how it goes to more faint the further you go was Jane so the fact that she got it wrong so to speak suggests to me that she did this deliberately and she wanted the house to almost float out of the landscape which to me is very much what she was like Jane was very comfortable in her own company and she sort of felt <laughs> aloof is the wrong word because she was also very good at connecting with people but she kind of floated in her own space, just like this house does on the landscape. So it gives me a sense of her, because there's this real presence which exists within the landscape. And it's at once very clear and very stark, and yet it's not overly obtrusive. So it just reminds me of her. And uh, as a side story, kind of parenthetical to the thing that I'm talking about now really doesn't have much to do with the lesson itself, but it's interesting to know where this painting came from. It was done as a series of abandoned farmhouses, and you need a little bit of a context for this. So during the apartheid government, the nationalist government, who of course are the ones who pushed forward the apartheid agenda. One of the reasons that we're not so fond of the concept of nationalism in South Africa and the world should realize hmm, there are deep problems with it, but the nationalist government pushed the idea of what we call the Swart Gefaar, literally translated as the black threat or the, the black kind of fear. And what this did was it told white people, you must be terrified of black people because if ever they come to power, they will take everything that you've got and you need to be scared, scared, scared. It was a rule of fear. And of course, that's a lot of what led to this apartheid. Apartheid literally meaning apartness because it's quite difficult to be connected to your fellow man if you are afraid of them. So... This series came about because Jane, who she was a, a staunchly opposed to apartheid kind of person, even was locked up, I know, for a protesting apartheid, as so many people were during that time, you know, your kind of liberal, progressive, wonderful university student type things, you know, she actively fought against that, deliberately sent her children to some of the only integrated schools in the country and so on. But Jane herself said that after being indoctrinated with this thought that they, the fictitious they, wanted to take everything, it came as quite a shock that, in fact, once apartheid fell, these sorts of home were not just taken. The quote-unquote barbarians that people had been fictitiously led to believe existed actually didn't want to take the home. And of course, people are not barbarians and monsters. People are people. So here we suddenly have these monuments to fear that perhaps really didn't even need to exist in the first place. So there's a kind of comfort in that thought that actually, you know, most of the demons in our heads 
really aren't there. Okay, so that's just, uh, that's very much parenthetical. Oh, look, beautiful view, how lovely. Hmm, hashtag no filter. But here's another one of Jane's. This is the first good piece of art that I ever purchased. I was very young at the time, so I think probably technically not a teenager, but not much older than that. Isn't that lovely? Jane really had a way of capturing water and light. So that's the Neisner Lagoon. But anyway, now back to the actual lesson, which is that Jane came from a family of artists, and I think often those of us who write, or those of us who paint, or those of us who do all sorts of things can often think, I need inspiration, and I need the inspiration to strike, and if I don't have the inspiration, then what can I do, and blah de blah But Jane's mother, who, I don't think Jane would mind me saying this, I think was the very best artist in the entire family, including Jane herself. She was amazing, and really she had, uh, she's one of a string of some of the finest artists in South Africa. But Lucy Wiles, I think, was particularly amazing. And when Lucy had Jane and Jane's sister, I think Paula, actually, not sure, sorry, family can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Jane and Paula, these two young girls, she was suddenly left by their father, and the only skill that she had was her art. So suddenly now she finds herself in, I assume it was 1950 South Africa, not knowing how on earth to support these kids except through her art. And that certainly wasn't an easy time to put food on the table. I mean, even now, rather difficult, but way back then. And of course, the indulgence of thinking, I need inspiration, wasn't really available to her, given the pressure of that. And so she did something which I think was quite wonderful, and this is a lesson for all artists out there, and then I'll try and apply it more broadly to the current circumstances, which is that she would walk around, they were in the Transkei, so that was an area of now what would be called the Eastern Cape, I suppose, and near the Wild Coast, and she would wander around until 10 o'clock trying to find something that did inspire her, some scene that was amazing or stunning or whatever, but her rule was that when 10 o'clock hit, I think it was 10, I might be wrong about that, but the concept applies anyway. When 10 o'clock hit, if she hadn't found anything that was inspirational, she would literally stop and paint whatever was in front of her. Didn't matter what it was, whether it was a rusty paint tin next to some rocks, she would paint that. Whether it was a bunch of chickens, she would paint that. Whatever it was, she would paint because she needed to not only hone her craft, but literally create a body of things that she could sell so that she could physically feed her kids. So I think that's quite nice. If we're sort of waiting for inspiration that sometimes doesn't come, that's a really healthy discipline to get into. So if you can say, well, I don't feel inspired, but by noon I have to write one page of my book or I have to plot out one of the scenes of this play, or I have to sketch something, or in this case, I'm thinking to myself, it's quite difficult for me to motivate myself to work because the ordinary aspects of my job are currently closed for calendar reasons, etc. And what I can do, however, is say, if nothing extraordinary has popped up, I can at least do one of the more banal things between 11 and 12 or whatever the case might be so that at least I'm getting forward, forward, forward. But anyway, that was a little lesson that Jane gave from her mother Lucy and the painting behind me is by Lucy. So let me show you how absolutely wonderful she was. I just think that is the most glorious scene. I presume that this is one of the more inspired ones, <laughs> rather than one of the 10 o'clock ones. But isn't that absolutely beautiful? She was so brilliant at portrait. Anyway, there we go. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Goodbye.